Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you're joining me today to visit the smallest cog to find out what Richard Hammond really thinks about my Lamborghini Huracan STO. Now, when I took delivery of this car, he absolutely roasted it. The color scheme is outlandish. The viola bast with the giallo accents, to be honest, an STO is not discreet to begin with, but we've popped out to Richard's workshop where my Clio V6 is currently being washed up before it's going to be taken inside. That's going to be getting a cog score today as well. I'm looking forward to finding out what they think about it, which will be coming soon from Drive Tribe. And talking of Drive Tribe, we're going to be catching up with Mike as well to check out the world's most famous Ford Mondeo, the stories behind that thing. But this is, of course, one of the most extreme cars I own. It is bold. It was always meant to be. And Richard was pretty vocal of his opinions on it. Anyway, let's see what he thinks about it in person, in the flesh or in the carbon, perhaps I should say, here today at the Smallest Cog. I am the first to admit that when I chose the colors for this car, buying my first Lamborghini, it was about doing something that would be very brave. It was kind of looking at the car, the size of the wing, the bodywork, the fact that this is modeled on the Super Trofeo race car and saying, do you know what? What would stand out in a picture online? Which is how I landed on the Viola Bast, this magenta pinky purple and did the vinyl giallo yellow accents all over it because the car is crazy why not play with it actually right now the car is kind of a caked layer of gray slash black slash brown with the grimy roads that we've had driving it out but um when richard saw this he was a little bit lost for words let's go shmi 150 shmi Yeah, I don't think he was the biggest fan of this thing. <laughs> Shmi, your eyes function. You kind of get the point, right? You kind of get the point of his first impressions of my pink and yellow Lambo. You, you did that to it. It's a fabulous thing. Made appalling. Stop it. Stop it, Shmi. Don't do that. Lovely car, made horrible. No. The question though, is what's he gonna think when he actually sees this in person? And that's what we'll find out shortly. You know what, honestly, when I spec'd it, it was all about just being crazy. It was the concept of me buying a Lamborghini. I'd had a whole bunch of McLarens and Ferraris prior to this point, but never a Lambo. And this, as an entry point, is just something totally, totally silly. Now we've actually come out today with the Clio V6 because Richard actually has a bit of history with Renault as well. And we're gonna be talking a little bit about that. Plus the fact that I happen to have on the plate a quote from Jeremy Clarkson. Obviously Hammond Clarkson and May back in those Top Gear era days. And that actually was a quote from when it was featured on Top Gear. Um, I don't think we're gonna bother cleaning this though because with the drive back home, 150 miles today, it's going to be a complete mess. Let's go find Mike though, I think. Have a quick chat about this Mondeo. How you doing, Mike? Good, welcome to the Smalls Cog. Thank you, it's good to be here. First time ever coming out to visit you guys. Yes. And what do we see? <laughs> this is the Drive Tribe Mondeo. It's been on the channel for two or three years now, um, and I've not had the keys for about two years. It's been lovingly restored, finally. It's been through quite a lot, but I'm absolutely loving it now. And we were having a discussion earlier, it could be the most famous Mondeo in the world. <laughs> I'm not going to claim that, but it could be. It's kind of cool, actually. Mondeo ST200, right? Yes, yes. So everyone thinks of the ST220. This was the one before it. And I, as you can see, daily drive it now. Make a complete mess of it. As yes. You should. Do you know as what? We've should. been incredibly jealous of your M5. Yes, build. the V10. Sadly, it's gone now, but... Um, that was so cool. <laughs> that was, it was cool to daily drive that. I, I can't believe that this gets like twice the fuel economy, as you'll know in something with a big V6 from the yeah. 90s. It's not exactly the most fuel efficient, but yeah, having that car, the E60, E61, absolutely loved it. V10 is my favorite engine. You've got one over there. Um, and it's sad that they're pretty much gone now. Yeah. E10s are effectively gone. End of an era, end of an era. So tell me, you must have put Richard up to the task of this <laughs> back when it was roasted. Absolutely. So yeah, I basically see who's basically doing great on YouTube, will then compile a list for either James or Richard to roast. You've been in, I think, two a or three of our videos now. 
Um, I will just never say forget. Say and this, I think. I will never forget when this, when that video dropped, because my phone just went wild. <laughs> it went off the charts like I've never seen. But you know what's really interesting? We, we were saying, I chose these colors to be a talking point. Yes. And it was so fun so to see. So if anything, you set a trap for Richard. A little bit, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is that, you know, we say it's a roast thing, but he's quite kind about it yeah, as well. It's he fun. doesn't go oh. too far. Oh, it's completely, it's fun. I love it. Love to get the different impressions. You've, you've talked about cars from all sorts of people, Matt Armstrong, Ben yeah, Collins. Yeah, exactly. The list just goes on and on and on. But when I told him, oh, Schmee's coming down, he thought, oh crap, I've, I've roasted his car. But <laughs> it'll be interesting to see what he says now that he sees it in person. Hopefully we've got one he loves and one he maybe yeah, doesn't love so Yeah, well, obviously, I don't know whether you've already said, he's got a lot of history with, with Renault being in the press office back in the day. So, yeah, I bet he's got some cool stories about Clio V6. I can imagine back when the Phase 1s were around, then the Phase 2s. Well, we shall find out shortly. I think after that's been cleaned up, it's going to be heading in. You guys are going to be giving it a... Uh... Yes, you could say we're kind of roasting it in person. We're giving it a COG score. So it's going to be marked on mechanicals, exterior, interior, sound and coolness. But out of 10 each category, so out of 50, you'll have a, you'll have a score out of 50. Okay. And with, so far we've had Matt Armstrong and Jimmy Broadbent. Okay. So E46 M3 and a Supra. Yep. And it's fair to say they were a wee bit shabby. <laughs> so I think you're going to be top of the list. I can't promise anything. No, no pressure on Scott from SG Motorsport, who was responsible for Absolutely. most of the build of this. Absolutely. But I think you'll get pretty top marks in all of those categories. So <laughs> well, I think that, you'll be safe. That's going to be coming up on uh, Drive Tribe in the not too distant future. Yes. When they finished up washing it up, we'll get it inside and um, Richard should be here shortly. Absolutely. A little behind the scenes because we are about to pull the Clio V6 into the smallest cog to see what they think about it. Well, I'll be heading upstairs to go and have a chat with Richard. And of course, very shortly, <laughs> we'll get the opinions on the STO. <laughs> Thankfully, that all went smoothly. We are now up on the ramp here, but just to quickly highlight, you start with a practical, sensible family hatchback, then fill it full of engine. Jeremy Clarkson, pretty appropriate for the little Clio V6. While the team are rating the Clio, we are joined by Richard. How are you doing? All right, mate, how are you? Very good. Welcome to the smallest cog. Thank you for having me to visit. No, you're more than welcome. Thank you, thank you for coming along. What a place. So tell us a little bit. Tell us a little bit about the smallest cog. Uh, well, the story of its origin story, Right, well, it came about uh, because uh, three years ago, somewhere in there is Neil and Anthony. Uh, they used to work on my car, so I had them do an E-Type for me, a Bentley S2, really nice jobs yeah. locally. And we established a routine where I'd go over on a Friday afternoon, we'd have fish and chip Friday, yeah. which was, um, well, fish and chips on a Friday lunchtime. That's what you do. And exactly. <laughs> I'd, I'd bring the chips and see how they were doing on my cars. I mean, there was just a little workshop. They were working yeah. on other cars as well. Uh, and then one week I was there a bit gloomy. And I thought, what's up, lads? Like, oh, well, we're losing the workshop. What? Oh, you can't. I need you to do my cars. And then I thought, well, I'm not Jay Leno. I can't just employ you to work on my cars. And there's no dignity for a mechanic in working for some tart off the TV one year. I said, I don't want to do any cars this year. And then they haven't got any work. So I said, well, let's, let's set up another business. I'll bankroll us into it. I'll set up a workshop. And then you could spend half the time covering the overheads and the rest of the time doing my cars. That was the plan. Yes. Then <laughs> now being it's evolved into the show, into the drive well, time videos. I then thought that might make a good TV show. And Discovery agreed and we made it into a TV show. And as a result, it's enormous. It was meant to be a small <laughs> workshop. But as a result, it's huge. So the overheads are vast. So they haven't done any of my cars. <laughs> <laughs> the one car we can't, because we've got to work on, these are customer cars, they've got to do through. it. We've got to earn money. What's in at the moment? What's... Um, over there we have a 911 owned by a customer, Andrew. He wants, um, he wants it turbo bodied, but he wants a sort of a singer-ish type okay. uh, race car for the road, bare yeah. interior. We had to explain patiently, yeah, that's great, mate, and it'll look beautiful, but that means every bit of surface on the interior that's normally covered with plastic and vinyl will be bare. So that's double the prep. So that's been on there for a while. That piece of junk, <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll see what they make of that. <laughs> Are you anxious? No, I'm really, really happy with then this. Then why have you kept looking across going, well, why is it a 10? I've seen you do it. Because I'm competitive. You of know, course you are. Okay. Do well. <laughs> In there, that BM owned by a local customer, a lovely bloke, loves that car. He's got two of them. Um, he's also got a lot of other interesting bits and pieces. Yeah. So we're going to make a really good job of that because I want cool. more from him. 
that Bentley belonged to Paul Dean Cronsbein, who's he was a lovely customer and we loved him and he died last year but I'm his sad. wife Sabina might be letting us do that we're going to see okay. behind that is an MGB that's a customer car gorgeous little roadster in the most beautiful I can't remember her name the guys remember she's in love with the car it's the most yeah. beautiful color that is my Jag over there that's been done for drive drive it's tucked in at the back yeah XJR that's actually had some attention one of my cars has been done okay it's a car I've owned twice Okay. I had it. I bought it off Richard Porter, who was a scriptwriter on Top Gear. Yep. Um, low miles, loved it. Had to sell it because <laughs> I always have too many cars, and then really missed it. It was up for sale. I bought it back. We're making that perfect. This is a customer car. That's in for some bits and pieces. Nothing too major, but he wants it right. Uh, and then over here, this is what you're running. Well, no, I I knew you were here today for your cog score and all of that. And I thought, well, I'm going to bring in the least Schmi 150 car <laughs> I can think of. Ta-da! <laughs> so you go as off-road as you can. So I thought, that, that's, that's not your kind of car, is it? What do you think? Come on. No, I completely. Obviously, I'm more in the supercar world and more in the yeah. track world. Yeah. But this has been, this has been, this is like a supercar landy. It's been bowled. Yeah. So it's been Bolded dialed up. big stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, so this has had new turbos on it, blah, 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 remapped. So it's, it's, it's really powerful and really talking. As a result, it's chewed its drivetrain to bits. Oh no. <laughs> I ruined it on the show because, I mean, this is a real business. Main thing about this place, it's real. Yeah. Um, so we're not just here when the telly's on. When the <laughs> telly goes out, we're still, they're still working. Um, so the first year I used that as the business truck, my car. Um, but because it spends most of its life with a trailer on, yeah, it, yeah. The lash of the drivetrain. So all of it's, that. Had to, I've retired it from work now. It's just my toy. Um, is, is it your your daily, so to speak, or is that putting, something with a plug, um, maybe? Uh, yeah, I, I have got a Mercedes EQS. Okay. Only nice. because when I'm hacking up and down the M4, yeah, to and from London, <laughs> was fun. So yeah. I might as well be in that. It's lovely. It's comfortable. It's quiet. And I'd rather save the petrol and put it in my Mustang. That's totally fair. So I'll use electricity for that. Fair and enough. the rest of the time I'm in the works <laughs> truck, which I've also ruined. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm detecting a theme. Well, it did so, 16,000 miles last year for the smallest cog. 15,995 of them were with a trailer behind it. Okay. And it's yeah. just, I've just- It's hard work. I've worked it to death. Yeah, so, it's still going. So talking about ruining things. I'm, I keep looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go and talk about this? Uh -uh. Talk Wait, to I'm, me. I'm, when you saw it the first time. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I saw a picture of this a while back on Drive Drive and we did a little thing about it. And um, as I recall, I just went, Shmi, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Mate. Um, oh, it just gets you here. It's, I'm going to have to, uh, the, the car. Have yeah. you driven an STO? No. No, I Regular haven't. Hurricanes, I yeah. presume. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's everything a Lambo should be, i.e. completely mental, pointless, <laughs> essentially useless. Why did you do it this colour? I mean, this was literally my philosophy. It's a Lambo. Mm. It's brash to begin with. Yes. The STO is as brash as you can get I, with something like this. Yes. Brash is an understatement. Yes. And given I do these videos and things online, why not play with the theme and literally throw out the wildest combo possible? But you know what's really quite interesting? Two other people have copied the exact same spec. There are two other cars that I know of already in the exact same magenta metallic paint with the yellow accents. Is this as came from Lamborghini? So the Did you yellow, order it in this? The, this is paint. This is painted from factory. That's the yellow right. I had to do as a wrap because at the time... Because Lamborghini the said, are you mad? <laughs> We're not making that. No, no, no. They would happily have done it, but they, they, you couldn't order the contrast pack at the time. My build slot fell because obviously this was two years ago and production and everything was all... So you did this to get attention. <laughs> you could. I, it's so un-me. If you know me, this uh, is like, this is wild. This is, this is completely crazy and out there. But I just so if you did this the to get attention, so I, I did this to hope that you know somebody might make a video talking about how crazy it was and put it as the thumbnail. <laughs> so what I did was completely walk into your trap. You basically made this thinking, oh, that will get some attention, and I did exactly. It was yeah. an idea. We were thinking that might happen. Well, it worked, didn't it? I fell straight into it. Right. Is so, it any better in person? Damn, I've been manipulated. I've played into your hands completely, mate. Um, it's. <laughs> I, look, I'll say this, 
A Lamborghini is a bloody silly thing to have. Magnificent and great fun and I love it. Oh yeah. This is a, even a silly version of an already silly car, as in the STO. And then given this treatment, what you're saying is, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. And that's well, what it is. The thing with cars these days is yes. that you can change you them. You said these days, you sound old. <laughs> So, I mean, that's kind of, I'll say that. But you can change it. My, my Clio actually I'll started it. its, my Clio started its life black. I repainted that into the acid yellow. Yeah, because that's which, worse. Good. Actually, which, I like the colour on that. I'll, I'll okay, be honest. Good. I do, I do think <laughs> black is... Just boring. Yeah, it is. So I've brought one car that you're a big fan of. Because, you know, you've, you've got some Renault roots. Yes, um, after about eight years working in radio um, and essentially starving to death slowly, <laughs> I, 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 what I, when I wanted to work with cars, I'd done car reviews on the radio, which is tricky. Um, and then eventually I got a job at Renault in the press office. Okay. So I, I mean, I, I wasn't there when that was launched. I had to look it up this morning when that came in. It was 2000 ish. They landed yeah, the in the first UK. phase one. Yeah. Um, so I'd left Renault by then, and actually I was working for Granada Men and Motors. Okay. High quality broadcasting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I did, I did drive one on Men and Motors, and I did what everybody did, which is think, brilliant, uh, donut this, and immediately threw a half shaft, yep. which they do. I've, I've heard that. I've yep. heard to be careful. Instantly. <laughs> Even on this wet, wet concrete out here. It would be done. It'll spin. And then, oh, I've done it. Yeah, yeah there we Every go. Time. We'll watch out for that one. Great little things, love it. Well, I'm pleased to have brought at least one car that gets the seal of approval, even if this one... <laughs> no, I've, your explanation has made sense. I get it. Given what your, your aim was to make a shocking car... That shocking garnered, is the word. ...garnered attention, I walked right into the trap. <laughs> so it worked. I can't... I'm a hat off. It worked. You did what you wanted to do. It still makes me feel a bit sick. <laughs> That's quite just a bit. We could look. We could do it in there. Yeah. Easy. Change the colour. Not a problem. <laughs> Make it something else. Oh, the nine two four's working. <laughs> Good stuff. So, see, that's work. Actually, ha see the the one thing to stress me. We are not. This isn't a stunt. This is a work. <laughs> Stuff's thing. happening. All the time. When you're not here, when the TV's not here, <laughs> we're here doing stuff, and that's what's going on over there. Admittedly, Anthony isn't. He's prancing about under your Clio. <laughs> Young Flump's working. Wait a minute. I have a very ominous little gift for you. You do? <laughs> Thank you. That, that's that for me? Yes. That's very kind. But it has to be, it has to be opened right now. Yes, I had... I, <laughs> which side is the side where I can see what is on it? And then I'm going to have a look before you see it. So, all right, I'm going to see this before you see it. And then you have to gauge... I think I know what this is. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> it is. It's exactly... And because it's a gift, I've got to have it on my wall, haven't I? I'll leave that up yeah, to you. It'd be really rude not to display it prominently on... Yep. <laughs> You're going to see it. I'll give you the wrapping. <laughs> I know... <laughs> I know just the room for it as well. <laughs> it's a digital artwork of the car put together by somebody who's done lots of pieces That's of my cars. It. It's, um... <laughs> it's every bit as striking as the car, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Okay, that'll go on the office wall. <laughs> I brought that internationally just, just to be here to <laughs> I'm busted. You've seen I've got it. And if when you next see in my office on the this isn't I'll be in room. Oh, You'll get me back with something. <laughs> bugger, I'm stuck with it. <laughs> lucky, lucky me. <laughs> We've just been upstairs filming a little interview, all of which is going to be coming quite soon. But of course, the Clio is inside there where we're going to have a cog score, which again, you'll find out shortly. But for today, to bring this car, to meet Richard, to go around it, to talk all about it, as well as being here with Mike, Tony and the team at the Smallest Cog has been really quite fun. I'm not going to lie, even though we are a good few hours away from base, and that's probably not the most appropriate car to be driving around very wet, greasy, cold, dirty English countryside roads. I'm probably going to take the keys to this one back. I actually drove the Clio to get up here. But the STO is not hiding, that's for sure. I'm very happy to have it back and I'm very happy to be able to bring it out to see Richard Hammond. That's it for now though. We have heard what he really thinks and he does really think what he said before when he roasted it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.